Hi everyone. So today uh, I'm just going to show you how to create a string and then uh, how to study the results or to extract results by running an compression analysis using uh, simulation mechanical, which is an uh, dedicated uh, simulation software uh, by Autodesk. Okay. So generally I start with uh, inventor part. I need to create a spring so then I go with sketch, select one particular plane and then I need to just have a center axis to create a spring which is a general procedure to do. Okay. So this has to be converted into a center line. Once that is done, it's common that all springs cross section will be in a circular one. So I just draw a circle dimension it. Let's say 0.5 mm. I also need to keep this distance in mind so that I should not end up with some error. Okay, so then now uh, I give this finish sketch. We have this coil option, which is very uh, beautiful option over here. Then we need to go and just select the axis. I'll just zoom out. Okay. Now see, we have other two options. One is coil size, so the pitch is 10 mm. I would like to reduce that to 2 mm. Or let us say, okay, let the pitch be 2 mm and the number of revolutions be somewhere around 5. I guess with respect to this diameter, this pitch distance is too much, so let me change the pitch to 1. Okay, this should be fine. Might be 1.5 because I'm going to do an compression analysis. Click on OK. Okay. Now, in order to apply uh, force onto this, I just need to flatten the spring surface. So, what I'm going to do is uh, selecting this coil ends. I will select this flat. So, you can just see that uh, whatever earlier was with tapered, now I can see it's with flat. I just give OK. Now again in order to apply a force I need to uh, flatten the surface so that way I will just again go back to sketch uh, so go and select the appropriate plane draw these two rectangles so that I need to just remove some material one at the top okay. one at the bottom I go give extrude, select this, I go and select the symmetric. I need to remove material, it's already been selected. Okay. So, you see the top surface is flat. Okay. The same way to the spring, the coil and the other end also needs to be flat. Just for okay. the same procedure, select. Rectangle here, when it's sketch, extrude, symmetric material has to be removed. I just give it. Now the spring is complete. Now, in order to start the analysis, just give a basic overview. This bottom part has to be fixed, and then we need to apply some amount of force in order to compress the spring. Okay. So, in, when it comes to simulation mechanical, uh, not just simulation mechanical, any FEA software, uh, uh, we can we have an option to displace the spring from this top layer and uh, towards the bottom by 5 mm or 3 mm, whatever it is. So, by doing so, the spring will compress based upon the material stiffness and all those things. We can extract the data uh, which we require, let us say we require I want to know in order to compress the spring for 3 mm how much amount of load has to be applied. So that is one way. The other way is we know the uh, load already and based on the load how much the spring will displace and what are the characteristics of the spring. Okay. So, okay. Uh, now as simulation mechanical is already installed in my PC, uh, I have this tab which is simulation where I can just go and directly uh, select launch active model. So I go, it has to be saved somewhere. So just in desktop, I save it as part 4.
uh, simulation mechanical is learned. Now I need to uh, select what sort of analysis is actually required in order to study uh, the different effects of loads onto the spring or effects of uh, prescribed displacement onto the spring. So the better, best one is to just go with non-linear and the MES. MES is nothing but mechanical event simulation which is tied to time. Okay. So I just go and click on MES and then I give OK. Even before uh, clicking on OK, you can just understand for what purposes you can go with MES. So this is a very good thing like let us say bellows. Bellows are those which uh, have some elasticity which can compress and then which can rebound and all such stuff. So we also have rubber here. So rubber and spring almost have the uh, same sort of characteristics. So we need to go with MES. I just click on OK. Yes, yes. So this is our spring over here. The first step would like to know, do is go to 3D mass setting because the diameter of oil which I have given is just 0.5 mm. So that way I'm uh, reducing it. I'm going to mesh the model. Okay, mesh is fine. Everywhere, okay, yeah, mesh is fine. So the next step is to uh, first to constrain this model. Okay, I need to see whether uh, what sort of selection method I have used. Whether uh, will I be selecting the surfaces or vertices or part, whatever. So basically, to constrain, it's required that we are always in uh, select surface mode. Okay, so it's already in select surface. I just go to uh, setup. We have this option known as general constraint. I go select this surface. I don't, I want to arrest everything, uh, nor it should rotate, nor it should translate. So I go and then uh, click on uh, fix and then OK. I rotate it, I just move it a little bit. OK. Now I have two options. One option is to go with uh, prescribed displacement, where I don't know how much force is required to compress the spring. Instead, I'm just going to give amount of displacement that is. Uh, already predetermined. Uh, let us say the mechanism uh, by kinematic all those calculations I came to know that the spring will by uh, for sure will compress by 2 mm. So now I want to understand if the spring compresses for 2 mm what is the uh, sort of stress and strain and other uh, results that can be taken out of simulation mechanism. So that is the point here. So I just click on uh, prescribed displacement. I go select on to the exact surface where I'm going to apply the force, uh, not the force actually, uh, the magnitude, let us say it's in mm. Um, I go select and just give, uh, let me say, uh, 2 mm. And in which axis I need to compress. So why is the axis? So I need to go select here. I need to just put in minus 1 because in negative direction the spring has to compress and then I click on scalar. Okay, scalar and then just OK. Whenever it comes to MES, it's required that you need to click on this curve and then assign time and multiplier. This time and multiplier is nothing but multiplier is amount of displacement, the 2 mm. So at one second, what will happen is that all of the sudden this 2 mm will act on to the this prescribed displacement will act on to the spring. What you can do is in order to extract very good result, you need to just uh, split this one uh, second into uh, maybe like uh, 0 0.01, 0 0.05, 0 0.1 that way and the same way you can also split the load. The final uh, thing is at one second it has to be, uh, the load has to be multiplied by one, that is this 2 mm. Okay. So what happens is that within a period of uh, 1 mm, uh, the complete load is split and slowly the spring will be compressed. So that way you can understand the stress and strain in a very good, uh, uh, as a very good output here. So I just, I am not going to split this as of now because this, here I am just going to explain you how to apply this translation motion and how to extract results. So I just go and click on uh, OK. And then fine. So our model is already merged. Uh, we have given uh, constraint and then uh, we have also given the load. Okay. Note here, uh, the load is towards 
plus y. So that's wrong here. I just go and then uh, vector. I just need to go and click on this view minus as input. Now this is the comp compressive load. Okay. Now when it comes to material, I just go edit material and then uh, select any standard material. Let me go with uh, uh, ASTM steel and then okay. okay. Analysis and then run. So it will start with uh, meshing here. It happens sometimes that uh, it just stops with meshing. So that is what you do. Go to task manager, check the performance whether the processor is fully used. If that is the case, we will have to be patient for some time. Might be in hours also. But for this spring, it should not take more than 10 minutes. Okay. What I have not done here is uh, in setup, I should have selected parameters and then uh, I should have reduced the number of time steps to 10 so that this analysis uh, might get finished in 5-10 five, five, minutes. But as I have left it to 20 steps, so this uh, one second of time is split into uh, divided into 20. So divided by 20, so for each and every uh, division of this 20, you will get an uh, result which is captured over here. While it's in process, if you want to just understand the physics, you can also do this. So let us let me wait until uh, this comes up to 20, the time second, and the time should come to one second. Uh, I cancelled the analysis because the time step was 20. I am going to reduce that uh, to less numbers, let it be 10 and uh, the duration is for 1 second after and then ok, analysis, so this should not take more than uh, 10 minutes, so I will just uh, ask the video and come back. So now the analysis is complete, here we should be able to see the physics. Okay. So when you apply some load onto the spring, it is supposed to uh, uh, it is supposed to buckle sometimes when the length of the spring is beyond uh, the buckling uh, values. Okay. So uh, the spring doesn't buckle here, but this compression load and it's applied over here. Okay, so the spring is tending to compress. Okay, so uh, the results that you are seeing over here is the displacement. I already gave uh, two mm of displacement in uh, that uh, while doing the pre-processing. I gave uh, two mm as the prescribed displacement. So the maximum displacement for a period of one second is nothing but two mm. Okay. Now uh, this is one measures which actually uh, shows you how much amount of uh, stresses are acting. So the stress should be maximum at the end of uh, the one second or might be at the tenth step. Okay. So, so this is just to understand the physics, whether I have applied the load properly, all those steps. Next you have a option uh, which is known as this reaction. reaction. So I just go, I select reaction and then I select uh, magnitude. Okay. So what happens over here is that based upon my prescribed uh, displacement, which is of 2 mm, now I come to know that how much amount of uh, Newton force I need to exert onto the top of the spring to make it compress for uh, or displace it for 2 mm. So this is other way out. Okay. So this is one way to understand the physics even before you get into the actual analysis. Hello? Yeah. So, okay. so one minus displacement. You have this reaction force. Okay. Whenever uh, we go with this prescribed displacement, it is recommended that uh, we extract results through this reaction uh, force. Okay. So then uh, I'll I'll come back to this FE editor. So as of now, what I've done is I've just created a spring. I've applied uh, some material to it. I've constrained 
spring at one uh, point and then I applied prescribed displacement of uh, 2M. There are, uh, let us say, uh, when I go to this part, you have different types of meshes over here. So by default in Autodesk Simulation Mechanical, they have given this option as spring. So I am supposed to select spring over here. Okay. And then when I enter into this edit, uh, uh, sorry, element definition, now you have this option of entering the stiffness of the spring. So if you know the stiffness of the spring and uh, all these stuffs, you just need to go with uh, this. So you need to enter the stiffness and then uh, click on OK and run the same analysis. So with this, I uh, end this session how to um, compress the spring, how to study the physics. Thank you.